This is going to be my first construction project. I'll be experimenting on my girlfriend's parents. It's got an extra element of difficulty because it's a conversion. I'm going to be turning their pergola into an art studio. There's uh, some very nice long bits of Oregon that came from a house in Brunswick. I've chosen some multi-pane windows and door. And uh, let's see if I can turn this trash into treasure. That may look like rubbish, but no, that is a very nice hardwood floor. Day two. That's Ken, who will be the artist in residence. The first thing I'm doing is putting in some stud work and windows. I'm thinking very, very hard about the roof. There's a lot of angles. Angles, angles, angles. I've removed the shady roof battens and I've kept all of the ones that are still good to uh, supplement the new pine wood that uh, Ken bought. Some of the roof will be made up of these corrugated plastic sheets to let more light in. Having a room of your own where you can stick things on the walls and make a mess and decorate it exactly how you like is something that everyone could achieve. Uh, today is the day about flooring, modelled by Wanyima. Ken's denailed all that old deck wood, ready for me and Wanyi to make the new floor. So there's the new deck, very nice. And uh, over here, the old deck is being used to upgrade the pergola. That is low carbon miles. It would be great if everyone had their own shed with all kinds of different businesses and art and activities going on inside. It would be good to see all the different styles people would come up with. I've invited a few friends along, one year Michael and Michael, to push the building project along. We're attaching brand new cedar weatherboards. They won't need painting and will weather nicely. A shed can be a place where people experiment with their ideas and schemes. Just say you were starting a business, you could be protected from paying a big extra rent. It's the sort of place you can tinker and mooch in. Alternatively, you could be coming up with major scientific breakthroughs. It doesn't matter in your shed, you can do whatever you like. Instead of windows on the front, we've chosen to go with a big flap nice and nice and uh, even textured ready for putting on the window frame Here we go. let's just sharpen up your communicating Thanks, skills mate. Oh, <laughs> mate, come on, come on. because you, 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 oh. you're talking like a little bit silly you just got to sharpen up video all right thanks mate <laughs> no harm done so come and get a close-up of this worksmanship The inside will be fairly rustic, but I'm doing a bit of grinding with sanding discs to make it a bit more habitable. Are you done, Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing finished. Very close now, very close. I mean, maybe at some point, like, think about the roof of it. Because once you've got water lashing at it, mm. you might want to get under a few points, like, to get some more screws, squeeze them together a bit. Mm. So maybe it's not finished then, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not finished. It's a drama. <laughs> it's, this isn't a drama, this is a documentary and uh, everything is under control. <laughs> well, it gets lots of light, that's really lovely. And with that comes some interesting shadows as the sun moves across. The fact that the uh, side opens up I hadn't really thought that I, they would be significant because of all the light, but it actually just creates that connection with what's outside. I've really enjoyed using that now. I really hadn't engaged with art and hadn't been particularly visual, but my brother had been very keen about abstract art. After I retired and had a bit of time on my hands, he demanded that I attend the course with him. It was crucial being in a class because there was all that sort of interaction and feedback and sharing of ideas. And, I mean the whole thing about abstract art is you're trying to be in the moment and allow your sort of instinctive responses to produce something and what it does is it sort of wakens you up visually and you start to see things or acknowledge things that you're seeing far more than I used to. Suddenly a lot of things that I've just sort of been pretty blasé about became very exciting. <laughs> being able to just 
play by yourself and and, um, and not feel under somebody else's gaze or influence. As much as I enjoy the classes, I think having a personal space is very important as well. The biggest thing is the kind of the excitement of of getting an idea where there hadn't been any before. The horses picture is a great example. You guys found it by the side of the road, and, and I couldn't really think of anything to do with it for must have been close to a month. My first action was to paint all the horses these really weird colours. I was sort of trying to make them not horses, but so it's that idea that sort of really excites me and gives me a real buzz. And then I had the idea of putting a car in amongst the horses. The way I work, I kind of can be working on a number of things uh, at once. It's not just, it's not like with oil painting where you sort of really work on one picture. So I, I can have 10 things that I'm working on. The studio is also a gallery, if you like, it's something where I can see my stuff and get a feeling for what I want to sort of do something about and what, what I'm happy with and what I should be throwing out. <laughs> no, it's interesting. I mean, I do have a style. It's not easy to describe, but that's one of the nice things about having the studio is that I can have a lot of my things sitting there to look at it and you sort of see a connection between between them, that they're sort of um, in a continuum. My brother's always telling me to sort of be more intense and go harder, but the ladies in the class sort of say, isn't he gentle? So I'll call that my style. Yeah.